We got bit by the auto gyro gyroplane bug in Oshkosh 2022 this year, and this is the Cavalon I got to take my first gyrocopter ride in, and it was awesome. Right now, we're getting trained on how to fly these things solo, my father and I, and we're having a blast right now. So, so let's learn more. This is about 800 pounds. Okay. I'll give you an idea as far as moving. You, uh, it was pretty easy to move with the two of us. Yeah. On the grass, uh, it's on grass. a little harder. Uh, on, as on pavement, it's one guy. One guy. Awesome. Okay, I'll meet you on the end of the smile ray. <laughs> Thanks, David. All right. So so you slide this stick foot over. to the left. <laughs> foot goes over and tucks in. I'm six foot six, so I have the seat all the way back. Had the back leaning all the way back. There's a telescoping tube with a button depress. So we're getting situated and figuring out this headset. I like the Bose A20s. They do a better job of noise canceling than those light speeds. Fuel valve is up and guarded. Throttle's idle. Brake set. On. On, but not Pump two check. Looks good. Abs and strobes on. Here all the other lights off. Waiting for a clutch and fuel pressure to turn off. Setting our altitude. Let's go to zero. Just for fun. Center. Continue. And comps on. And set this one up. Set to field elevation. We're going to go to So he's doing the pre flight. I'm fussing with my camera. Okay. It's the Garmin G3X. And I believe it's the 10 inch model. Is that the Garmin G3? Yeah, G3X. G3X. So this is the main page. Here's the page with all the map and traffic on this side. And then on this side, it just shows the traffic without the maps. So it kind of declutters it for you. You can see the runways, you can see all the aircraft. If you touch an aircraft, you get its data down below. Awesome. Yeah, not too bad. It's a pretty nice little unit. If they're flying in front of you, like this guy's. Not in front of us, but turn yellow. It, we're here, so as he comes in front of us, the yellow dot will come out in front of us, like that. Perfect. Yeah, if they're further away, they'll be, they won't be a yellow dot, they'll be rectangles or triangles or whatever. Having some squares. form of moving Those map is great somewhere. for situational yeah. awareness. Okay. I have noticed that some of the smaller yeah. Garmin maps, it was Fire. difficult to find where the traffic is, the resolution is. Still leaving a little bit to be desired on these units, given that it's 2022. So I cut the audio a little bit so you didn't hear as much of the rumbling, but that's close to what it sounds like. I reduced the loudness, but it's it's got some kick. This being the first flight of the day, he's got to warm up the engine oil above 120 degrees Fahrenheit. And I have my he my microphone is tucked inside my headset. That's why it's a bit loud, even on my. There's one that's further away. You see him way out there. Solid square. So he's checking the engine gauges, watching that Tim. So he's starting the propeller first. I gotta warm it up. And I yeah, said I propeller, but I meant rotor. Then we'll take off from over there. Yeah, we they wouldn't like it very much. We start to take off. Oh no, no, I wouldn't expect it to take off from there. I'm just saying you start that the tail sure. rotor. So the, it's not really a tail rotor on this one. It's actually just an engine. Just an engine propeller. Yeah. So that's our thrust. This is going to be our wing, our lift up here. And so that's going to give us all of our. Oh, you know. 
So that was me using totally incorrect <laughs> words and descriptions. So the rotor blades are the two blades up top, sometimes three bladed for gyroplanes. The propeller is the thrust or tractor um, propeller where it's on the front, but this is a thrust on the back of a Rotax 915 IS motor. So fuel injected, 141 horsepower. We're taxing on grass. They can be a little bumpy, so you want to be careful to go taxing slow and not thrash it about. They're 800 pound machines with some long levers up top. The brake is a hand brake. You don't use tow brakes like you do in a standard aircraft. All the tow pedals do is control the rudder, which are quite effective because they're in the slipstream in the thrust line of the propeller, so a lot of air is moving over them, so they become very effective in lesser low power situations. Then it requires more, more force. But the brake is part of the throttle system where you squeeze with your fingers and you can have a pawl that sets and locks it. So right now he's guarding the cyclic, which is the stick in the middle. And he's gonna line up, takes about 20, 30 seconds. And once he's lined up, and he's already started the pre-rotation, so he's holding that with his finger, letting that pre-rotate build up to about 200 RPM. Once we get up to 200 RPM, 220, usually you're letting go of the brake, it's pulling back on the cyclic, and advancing throttle as needed. So we're picking up speed, driving more of that wind to get the auto rotation in the rotor blades. And he'll lift up, stay a little bit in slipstream or the ground effect, but he's already rising off because he's picked up enough. I've been practicing balancing, staying low, a lot of fundamentals right now. But once you have enough speed and you're about 55 to 60 miles an hour, then you should have enough climb power where you can actually start your climb. So you climb out about 60, 65, and you're rocking. Once you get to altitude, pull back power does have a turbo. You only want to be running about five minutes. So you pull that back, pitch down to maintain airspeed, because once you pull that off, your airspeed will bleed down. So you tilt the rotor disc a little bit forward, because you have to imagine that the rotor disc is encountering that wind at an angle, like the upside down of a frisbee. So the less that it's catching, the more efficient the blades are and the less drag you'll have. And so we're following the railroad tracks out. It's beautiful. I've now done it with the doors off, which just have simple little pins you click, pull out. You can fly. It's definitely loud and buffeting. It kind of takes a little bit of getting used to, but it's a blast. I love being able to just look down at a turn and go, oh, well, there's the ground. So Michael's now going to take me on a tour of the Oshkosh area. So some of the first things I noticed was the intense vibration that is a ha by having a rotor. Um, a propeller is one thing, but having that rotor, and I don't, I've only done one other helicopter ride 
or any type of rotorcraft ride before. That was the first thing I noticed. Um, the stick definitely jiggles in your hand a fair bit since it's all part of that same vibrational system being connected to the rotor, which is spinning about 300 RPM. And it gets, you get used to it over time. It's not a big deal. So right now we're just doing a gentle turn. You can do lots of really fun turns in the gyroplanes. You do a pedal turn. It's easiest to the left due to the, how the rotor blade is spinning. But you basically kind of pull back and full left. You do want to do it slow, at slower speeds, not crazy fast speeds. And you just basically do a 180 right there. And it's really fun to do that. You could do a lot of cool slow flight and Michael was taking him around to check those things out. So this is gonna go on. I'm not gonna speed it up just so you can get an idea of, of what it feels like. Feel free to skip ahead. I jump towards where I'm actually filming a little more dynamically with my iPhone but I was having iPhone issues. I even managed to accidentally, due to how the iPhone clipped in in my settings, I ended up having it call SOS, which alerted all my SOS people, which happened to be my dad, my mom, and my wife, while I'm flying a gyroplane for the first time at Oshkosh, no cell reception, and yeah, I basically caused a very strong dose of fear and search on my dad's part who couldn't get a hold of me and I even got a call from I believe it was a police officer and I didn't recognize the number so and we were flying I'm like why would I answer that and I think almost probably about like two minutes before landing I realized like what's this SOS thing on my phone oh no oh no so thankfully everything was cool my dad's former detective and he was mustering all the resources to start figuring out what happened no one had an APB on us didn't know the tail number all that all that jazz so fun times uh, oh gosh so just be very careful if you're going to clip your phone to record to not have the SOS be if you press and hold the power and volume button for longer than five seconds because it'll auto dial and sends out this message so I was getting a text from my family which I did not realize until I was on the ground Again, you can see how stable he was showing me how just once you trim it and you're con kind of constantly trimming it depending on how winds are behaving and power settings. So you're doing that and you can get a relatively smooth flight. Garmin even has, and they're starting to show them, you'll see a turn here that he's demonstrating. Garmin even has an autopilot that you can add into this and we're looking at doing that if we decide to purchase one so you can see how he's doing like a 45 60 degree turn right now and super smooth we were talking obviously since my phone had decided to not be recording i didn't capture any of the audio between he and i but he's just telling me about his history of flying and doing rotorcraft, I believe it was like 12 years. And he's with Sierva, who is the founder, the inventor of the auto gyro. He has been working with them as their chief flight instructor or chief flight officer, can't remember the exact title. But I was talking to Mark, who's the owner and really great company, check them out. They're up in St. George, they also do a lot of Rotax engine training and they were the ones who we ended up flying with to do this demo flight. They're up in Petaluma as well, so they're split between St. George, Utah and Petaluma. And then Michael also let me fly a bit, which was fun. Didn't do much. I'm not too aggressive about like, I gotta fly this thing right now on demo flights, even though I probably should. It's only 15 minutes, really. Definitely go check it out if you can find a local rotorcraft club or one of the dealers for auto gyro. Go sit down, make friends, 
pay for a discovery flight and see if you like it. They are pretty awesome and I keep encountering people who are been flying for 20, 30 years, 50 years, airlines, and now they pretty much just do auto gyro. I say it's a blast, it's fun, it's a different type of freedom. It's not fast, it's still a light sport aircraft. You're not cruising along at rocket speeds, you're doing probably max 100 miles an hour, 85, 100. But it gives you a chance to see things and interact with the space. So I think right here he did a pedal turn or was demonstrating a ability to do those faster, shorter uh, cert diameter turns. And you could do the sunshade down, wear a ball cap. They do recommend if you're going to be flying a lot to protect your hands the very least put on sunscreen because you are in this open canopy where the sun is just pouring in giving you great views but also a lot of UV exposure. Got a little bit more, probably about three or four more minutes of this view. So I'll let the music take it out, enjoy it, and I'll jump back in with the iPhone footage.
Captain Long tracking along Fisk, entering at the corner for the ultralight pattern. Something that I really enjoy about the Cavalons is the visibility you have. You have a lot more than in many other aircraft. You can quickly tilt and look up and down very easily in the aircraft. Cavalon Lima Romeo coming over the oak tree. And I, I really appreciate just that view. It makes kind of connects you with what flying is, which is being up in the air. So, so we're pretty much on base to the grass strip final for the light sport area. I got a little nervous, to be honest. This is 60 miles an hour. Coming in. And he was turning and banking, and you know, you got this wide door like right there. It's like, ooh. <laughs> so he's doing just a normal flare like you do in an aircraft. Get on the mains, hold it up, and then let the nose come down, and then full forward. And then he's going to switch it to. Brake. On the rotor, he's op popping open the door, get some air. As if you know Oshkosh, it's hot in the summer, especially in this little UV atrium bubble. Now he's just letting that rotor. Yeah, so now he's just switched to brake mode. So that's going to help slow it down. And then as it comes to a, a stop, hopefully we'll be in the center and he'll time it. So you got it to stop over there. There's this overdrive that you can turn on with the pre-rotator and you try to catch it. So far it takes me about four times each time <laughs> to get it centered. But that's the Cavalon. Awesome machine. Check out Sierra dot arrow and those are the people calling me about the sos cheers have a great day thanks for watching and like and subscribe for more content safe flying <laughs>